any bed there, huh? Hmm? So probably don't end up on the table, huh? Probably not. Probably not. What's going on, guys? Hello, everybody. Hey, I'll pull it up on this. Let's see if it comes But you also got comments right there on the side. Looks like we've got Sharon and Claire, Regina, hey, Sunflower hey, Mom, hey. Kathy. Thank y'all for joining us. So how is everybody? There is Pinky, the Payne family. How are all of you guys tonight? Nancy, there's the Stivers. What up? We were just talking about y'all and talking about how good y'all are doing. Y'all are doing amazing. And your new plays, congratulations. Red and Karen, Greg's Grand, Country Homestead Preacher, their well, Squizzito Tasting Room. Jen. So how is everybody? It has actually been pouring rain here, which is Praise so glorious because it gotten very, very dry. And we got through with the hay. Yes. The hay's Started done. So about the that hay. one. Yeah. <clears throat> Thankfully, the hay is done, so. It was a long <clears throat> week, but praise the Lord, we are done for the season. Yes. And I'm pretty sure we got enough hay. I think so. Unless it turns off a drought and we have to start feeding really early, I think we're going to be good. So that is coming out tomorrow is a vlog of doing the hay. We actually worked on it for, I don't think we even said this in the video, but it wound up taking six days and it really should have taken like maybe four Vivian said, I don't know how I got a wrench. <laughs> I got a bunch of wrenches last week. So. Going to need some lessons on hay. That's awesome. That's good. What kind of equipment do you already got? That's the big question right now. Which you can do it with less than the best yeah. or less than oh, what yeah. we have for sure. I mean, we started out um, on bottom end. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't want to go back to the old days where they had to use the sling blade sickle. And but it is possible. It is. I seen a video of a girl doing that here a while back. I mean, she cleaned a field quick. I saw a video this week of people Zero. lined up doing it. Y'all have got an adventure ahead of you, the oh, yeah. stivers do. It's going to be fun. Are y'all uh, planning on... Um, Getting somebody else to do it, like going in partners with somebody, getting them to cut it and cut it and bail it for you on the, like the halves or what? It, what's your plans there, I guess? So it's so good to see y'all. I see Tinker's wife. Um, <clears throat> lots of you. I saw oh. Kate up there. I got um, 82 in the chat on mine. So what have y'all been up to? So we told you we've been up to hay. And then um, just you were on vacation to do hay. I was thinking last week how many people <laughs> takes their vacation to cut hay, but and work and work it's and what work. we got to do. Um, but we have lots of plans in the works, lots of plans. We are looking at um, portable shed buildings because we are going like full fledged, legit meat business store. Emily's store. been dying yeah. to get a store for, what, two years now? Yeah. She wants her a store, and then they can sell their produce. We can also have the meat in there. Honey, soap, lotion. Um, what else were we talking about putting in there? Yeah. Milk, possibly, because we can sell milk legally here in Arkansas if people come to our farm come to buy to farm, it. Yep. Eggs, for sure. So that is where all our money we're trying to save and Pinch pennies. Pinch pennies to put it all back because it's going to be expensive. Not not to mention we also need a big um, walk-in walk -in freezer. freezer because our first meat that will actually be inspected that we're allowed to sell by the pound is going to be, is that in January? For the That's pigs. For the pigs. Mm -hmm. So we're working towards freezers priority number one, I guess you'd say. Um, so that is what we're up to.
You going back up? I saw yeah. Vivian had a question. We got 25 layers and 20 to butcher about two weeks ago. My layer chicks are packing on the butchering ones behind. Why are they doing that? Well, it's yeah. I don't know. You might have to separate those out, I guess. Aloha um, from Hawaii. Sunflower mom's which, eating a Santa tomato sandwich. Which the the I'm trying to think of where, broilers wouldn't come to me. Um, they don't grow that many feathers like on their back end and, and underneath. So those other chicks may be seeing like exposed skin. Yeah, what that's one thing you gotta watch for and put on you is once they started packing it, any yeah. of them were liable to pack it. Once they get blood, it's like uh, they won't stop. They'll mm -hmm. almost kill them. So I'm gonna say you might have to separate them out for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um because they just grow so differently and those layers are just so quick and like light on their feet. And as the broilers get bigger and bigger, they're just so heavy and they just can't defend themselves. Anchorage Prepper said, how's my case of tractor butt? It was very sore. Yeah. My legs were tired. I was so ready to stand up and stretch. He looked after about day four, like someone had given him a good beating. And you were pale and dark circles under your eyes. And it was long. Because we had quite a bit of breakdowns. Well, and so. Friday. Friday was a whole Friday. day of breakdowns. So he, I think he laid awake some thinking about how am I going to fix this. Have you canned peppers and do you soak them in salt water? I have canned peppers, but mainly it's like um, jalapenos and things like that that I just can in like a. Salt water, um, I'm trying to think, it's been a bit, and like vinegar brine, so it's like pickled, I guess you'd say. It doesn't taste like a pickle. There's no dill or anything in it, but it's it's what they call pickled peppers, like hot peppers that you buy in a jar that then you can put on stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't, I didn't necessarily soak them in it, but I canned them in salty vinegar that's what, water that's the banana peppers that i put on the banana salad. and then jalapenos and I don't put them on my salad don't no me. but that's what i've canned in that so yeah. um i'm actually gonna make a pepper video tomorrow we're gonna smoke um or actually just roast some peppers i'm gonna um, smoke them but you're I, gonna smoke some but our little precious puppy dog chewed the end of my smoker cord off yeah pepper is definitely a puppy and <laughs> Nothing safe. So she also also tore up a, a window screen on the window. Go there. <laughs> she cannot be left alone. Hey, that reminds me. I was going to tell you when I got home. Oh, will you dehydrate some more okra? Sure. I love that first night. We actually went to um, Kevin and Sarah's house last year at Living Traditions, and they said, "Okay, you got to try this okra." And it was so good. It was so crunchy. And we're like, okay, what's what's the recipe? What'd you what'd you do to it? And they're like, it's just okra. Throw it in dehydrate. You just slice it up like you're gonna fry it and dehydrate it. It's crunchy. Now it's not good um, if it's left for like a long time, left over. Mm -hmm. It gets real stale, but it is it's good when it's fairly fresh. Hi, Cheryl from Poplar Bluff. I've actually been to Poplar Bluff several times. Worked up there before uh, the company that I work for right now has got a compressor station in Poplar Bluff. So Jen is putting up okra right now. Do you do anything to it before you freeze it? I've I've had people tell me the best way they froze it. And so that's how I started doing it is just I don't wash it or anything. For some reason, they say don't wash it. You just freeze it whole and then you wash it when you pull it out of the bag. And it does cook just like fresh okra. One time, didn't you, um, you done something to it and rolled it in the cornmeal and froze it? Or was that? I tried that. That was a lot of work. A lot of work. <clears throat> to get it ready to like be baked or fried and then freeze it in a single layer. It was okay, but it was, it was definitely a lot of work. And I'm all about the best, easiest way. Just had some fried zucchini with Italian seasoning and melted cheese. Ooh, that sounds good. I've also had someone else tell me lately to take squash and zucchini and slice it real thin in rounds and put like salt on it. And I think they just said salt, put it in an air fryer for like seven minutes or something. And it's like 
a chip. I don't like the, somebody's going to do the pepperoncini. Uh, they were mushy. I don't like mushy ones. And I ain't, you ain't quite figured out on that. Is it the, how long you uh, can them for? Was that what made those ones mushy? I don't know. Grilled peppers, but not smoked. Hmm. I think we're, I'm actually going to try it for this video just in the oven, just roasting them. Cause I'm trying to put out some videos for like some people don't have all the fancy equipment to do all the things with. So I'm trying to do stuff with just basic equipment. Um, so we're just going to use the oven and right. roast them and then grind them because we've got paprika peppers and then we've got three types of chili peppers. One, our tag just says chili. So I don't know what it is. It's and chili. then um, guajillos and um, there's a third one. Poblanos. So I'm going to roast those and then grind all those together for like a chili powder. And then I'm going to do the paprika separate for paprika powder. Never eaten okra. So this year they planted one plant to try it. For huh. several, several ways to try it. Fried okra, boiled okra, dehydrated yeah. okra. Rolling cornmeal fried. You can't be grease, But that's not the healthiest. But you either pretty much love bulled okra or you hate it. Roasted okra? First time vacuum sealing. Oh, I just washed it. Well, it'll turn out fine. But after someone said, don't wash it, just, I was like, oh, yeah. I'm all for easy. Uh, Tim asks, do you butcher all the cows on your property or take them to the butcher shop? We take them all to the butcher shop. Uh, usually when we take a load, it's several different steers or several different pigs and the way that works is sometimes we well the way i look at it is the effort that we're putting into feeding and doing everything pays for our processing so uh, well and it saves we don't, me time and, yeah he has a full-time job so he that have to be something when he was here all the time um and he's not and um and then also it's so hot and we don't have yeah. a cooler on a beef. You need to leave them hanging. I think it's five or seven days. Yeah. They even, they do that at the place we take them to, or they say they'll be really watery. Mm -hmm. um, Cause all that blood and stuff. So we're not set up to do it. I'm not going to say we won't because we might do that in the future because Maybe. Slaughterhouses around here, it's probably all over the country too, but they are like getting crazy, ridiculous backed up. Um, everybody's getting more into taking stuff instead of buying it at the store and just there's a whole bunch of different reasons. Mm -hmm. We've done a, a good size pig here in the yard. Uh, of course, we do all of our own chickens. Um yeah, we, our, we can do it. I mean, I'm I'm going to say we could easily do a okay. cow, but we'd have trouble with all the specialty cuts um, until we learned not, how to do not that. Not set up with any of the equipment. No. Or, uh, like the band saws to sit there and cut your steaks. I do love me a T-bone. Tamara said, thank you for the Mayo video. It's changed our entire household. Aww, oh, wow. that's awesome. Lane even liked it. He's He is a Mayo, oh, yeah. like, Mayo, not man, or not, not Miracle Whip. Whip. He's not on the Miracle Whip train. Mm -hmm. I can eat either, can but eat. he is not a fan of Miracle Whip. So I was worried because I recommended her doing that because I love her mayo. I love her honey mustard. And looked at the video today and it wasn't doing very good. And I was like, maybe everybody don't want to see that, but <laughs> it's good to hear that. I'm glad that people people enjoyed it. But Lane approved. Lane does approve. Yeah. My okra has a flower bud on it. Ooh. Maybe you'll get some. Oh, yeah. You're going to get some. Unless her season ends too quick. Hopefully not, though. Nah, if it's already got a flower on it, it's going to be, what, a week? I don't know. And I know it, when off. it starts, I'm yeah. picking every other day. And a lot. Yeah. We, we've always said before that uh, we don't need very much. Just probably what 10 20 plants and then when we do something like that it's we don't hardly get any off so this year uh, i did a 100 foot row and 
It's, we're giving it away like crazy. <laughs> Sally said Merrick Whip should be outlawed. That's Lane's thoughts for sure. Ooh. 14 days for beef. Beef. That's, uh, I know there's something up there pretty high. I mean, you got to have a, a cooler to leave it hanging in. And Kira said she just saw the mayo recipe and got an immersion blender. I have made a bunch of failed attempts at mayo and it's frustrating because oil is expensive <laughs> and then you just got to be oily mess that's gross. The red so, says, says, mm -hmm. miracle. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, Patty says she has clear, warm weather clear into late September. So yeah. that's good. You'll get some okra. Okay. So what are some of the things that like someone told us they're growing okra for the first time and they're growing one plant? That's a really good idea because you don't know if you're going to like it or not. Um, we, however, just have a thing where we're like, let's try this. And then we plant like a whole row of it and we don't like it or it just doesn't get picked or whatever. So or you don't know um, when to pick it. Yeah. You don't even remember what it was. I'm notorious for, I just get out there and go and plant. And then he's like, well, what is that? I don't know. I didn't put a steak there. But there it was a steak. <laughs> drives his perfectionism. It does. Bonkers. But so what are some things that y'all are growing this year for the first time or that you just heard about and, and you're trying it's kind of crazy or maybe something not like a crazy variety, but it's just something you've never tried. So y'all be putting it. We're going to look through that in a minute. So be putting your things in there and we're going to show you some of ours. So this was a really great surprise this year. It is actually called a Tigger melon. Um, pretty sure the seeds are from Baker Creek mm -hmm. and they They're are good. going crazy. Really good. I didn't even know there was any out there. And I went yesterday and I think I picked like eight or 10 of those things. They are, I'm going to call them like a cantaloupe slash honeydew. Something. Maybe. It's just kind of unique. I don't know. It's very sweet and very, very delicious. I don't have a Kajari melon in here, um, but they look somewhat similar. And they're about the same size. Yeah, it's called a ticker melon. So uh, the Kajari melon is actually awesome too. It's more to me like a um, honeydew, mm -hmm. but they're very sweet. I would give both of those a big thumbs up. Put um, those on your list. Yeah. So um, we also grew these and they should close. not, what? should not look like this when you pick and eat them and Emily will attest to that because she ate one yesterday that looked like this, but they should look like that. So this thing is not ripe, <laughs> but it is called a jelly melon. Um, I don't know about it. I'm not going to give this a thumbs up. You got to try a ripe one. To it, it we're going to have to try a ripe one. Yeah. Cause it's, but it's, Unripe it's is a thumbs down, though, I mean, yeah. and it's pokey. I mean, these things, if you go to grab one hard, it will seriously do some damage. But um, I've heard of people, I was reading on Baker Creek's website, too. They're good to juice and sweeten and drink like a juice, or, or it said mix them with yogurt. They're delicious, but I don't know. They're not delicious to me yet. So I'm not sure about that. Just we'll come back to that. Prickly. Okay. We also grew. Talking about the Kajari melons. Yeah, that's what those look like. I'm sure you've heard Jess talk about those. That's her thing. They're really good. This was actually the first year we've ever tried those mm -hmm. or been successful. Okay, we also grew these, which we have been having trouble. This is another one of my things I didn't mark. So we've had to figure out what these are. These are actually tomatillos. They have this husk on them. I thought they were humongous ground cherries. And then they turned, they're sweet and they turned yellow. And I was like, well, tomatillos are green. Um, but these are not ground cherries. We've just narrowed it down. And these are tomatillos that once they get so ripe, they turn yellow. Right there. 
most of the time people pick them green and make like salsa verde and stuff like that. So these are good. They're, they're actually pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. We just had more. And I was reading that you can make these into, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh -oh. Um, oh, yeah. Like jam, preserves and stuff like that. I don't know. I may give that a try because we've got like two or three plants of them. I want you to take some of these things and pickle them. Is that what that is? Yeah. Pickle a whole bunch of them. So these are... Mm -hmm. The package actually says Mexican sour gherkin. We've been calling them cucamelons. Oh, okay. It's on the a little computer. bit of cucumbers. And that's exactly what they taste like. The kids think they taste like pawpaws. I don't know if y'all know. What we have as a pawpaw is not actually a pawpaw. We've called it a pawpaw our whole life. Passion fruit, isn't it? But it's a passion fruit. Yeah. But that is what the kids think these taste like. They smell like a cucumber. They taste like cucumber. They're a little sour. Yeah. I have. No. They're a little sour. I like them. I think they'd be good in like no. Little pickles. Yeah. So that's some of our adventurous stuff. Let me go back up now. See if we can. Go back mm, up. Yeah, I'm trying to find where we started that at. Mm, I still get that taste. Let me go get some water. Okay. Like a sour aftertaste. Okay, here we go. Appalachian Mercantile said, I grew the red noodle beans this year, but I didn't like them. I didn't like those either. I grew them last year, and I just could never figure out what to do with them. I tried stir frying them a little bit, and they were okay, but they weren't like something I was like, I love that. Rutabaga, turnips. I want to grow rutabaga. Sherry said, I'll be growing bok choy first time. I like bok choy too. White miniature cucumber is what Patty said, um, and cucumelons. We grew the white miniatures this year, and we grew the um, apple, mm -hmm. silver, apple white or something. We grew those. What's under your phone? Oh, I've got my phone proper. <laughs> these, I think, were, um, these might have been the silver crystal apple. Yeah, they're good. When it gets hot and dry here, though, our cucumbers get bitter, and we're on the verge of that. So Those haven't turned bitter yet, have they? A little bit. But these was the other ones that we grew? Yeah, and that's what she said she grew, too. Those were really good. Lupas and pumpkins, sprouting alfalfa, no garden. Oh, that's that's good. Cowpeas I wish we could grow alfalfa. And butternut squash for the first time. I love butternut squash, and I like growing them. They grow really well. Last year, watermelons were a fail, but they're doing great. Ground cherries, could take them or leave them. That's what I've heard a lot of people say, so I don't know. Orange Amana tomatoes. Ooh, I'm going to have to try that one. A what? Orange Amana. Peanuts for the first time. Man, I haven't had good luck getting peanuts. I wish I could. I'd like a bunch of roasted peanuts. Birdhouse gourds. Now that's something that I have gotten across between some of our birdhouse gourds and our loofah gourds, and they're they're birdhouse gourds like this big around and about that tall. They're huge, and they're growing everywhere out in her milk cow pen. Yeah. Oh, their melons got ate by rats. That stinks. Brussels sprouts. Aww. Can't ever do good on Brussels sprouts. Mina said, I, maybe it's mine. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I would go to the USA for the first time and only time to see your store when it opens. Wish you the best on that endeavor. Aww. Thank you very much. Patty said, excited. we grew the yellow tomatillos and made salsa verde with them. I may have to do that. All right. Andrew has told you before that I am uh, what do you say? Not not bashful. Not bashful? Yeah. No, he's not. In real life, he's not, and I am. So I was driving down the road today, and I've actually passed this place several times. And uh, it's kind of back off in the country, and it's an old uh, market that was a, a produce stand that I never see open. So I stopped in there today and asked if uh, – 
just ask them. I said, y'all want to sell that building? I don't know. We'll see if this will work. There's the building. I don't know if they're going to sell it, but probably not. He said no, and then he started thinking, yeah, maybe. Uh, it but was, it's not did far you say from the that, house. What? That it was actually was a little store? Yeah, it was a produce market, um, and they done really well out of it. But the man was, uh, I think he said 80 now, and he's retired and just don't want to do it no more. But anyway, I'm trying to get that. It also had a pea sheller on the front porch. And it had an awesome pea sheller on the front porch. So, But you asked about too. Yeah. You were like, well, is that for sale? Is that? Is that? <laughs> what's, what's not for sale? Vivian says she planted Cherokee purples for the first time per our recommendation, and she loves them. Cherokee purples are the bomb. <laughs> yes, they're so good. Cherokee purples. Um, uh, oh, what's that? Brandywine. Brandywine or another one of my absolute favorites jen from squisito tasty room said eight ball squash and golden delight zucchini from Haas tools we grew quite a few Haas seeds mm -hmm. this year too we've been very very pleased um they've their seeds sprouted so very well and just we've just been tickled and they're getting more varieties just all the time their seeds are just mm -hmm. growing and growing I'm actually thinking about sending him some of that mere lettuce seed. Yeah. Hey, Smith Family Ranch. Uh, I, we can't ever do Brussels. We've done them one year, and I mean, had a really good, really good crop on them. Okay, that's really interesting. What? Appalachian Mercantile says, slice the end off a bitter cucumber, rub your finger on it until it foams, and it'll get rid of the bitterness. I've heard of cutting the end off of them and rubbing two of them together and doing that. And Mark said, I made a ground cherry jam that's amazing. That sounds good. We hope to raise two cows and two pigs, one for us and one to sell. Will one extra pay for our processing? Yes. Should, yes. It should, yes. Because there is just a lot of people who um, want meat, but they just can't do it. They don't have the ability or um, it's just not feasible. They just don't live where they can, don't have land, don't have a trailer. Or just don't want to. Thank you, Sherry. It is hard, hard work. That is very sweet. Oh. My Brussels didn't do good at all both times I tried to go them. Mine either. Bugs love Brussels sprouts around here. Would the honor system work for us on a, uh, a wagon and pull it in at night? For what now? Uh, I think they're talking about maybe for the you store. Use a wagon. With root, where'd it go? Uh, you wanna put up there. Um, Where's it at? I'm lost. Right okay. The honor okay. system would probably work. I'm not yeah. out in that, but. That's uh, what the people use that. Um, that we started with? We started mm -hmm. where we got our pigs and stuff. Uh, a wagon would not because we're going to need uh, freezers, probably refrigerators. Um, I also want to be able in the early spring, you know, plant start season, I want to be able to sell some of our extra plant starts. There's several, several yeah. different things. She's going to have soaps and lotions in there. Now for the produce, something like that would work great. But with our setup here, uh, I guess you'd say I've pretty much fenced everything in or it's got garden around it. So they're going to have to be up here at the house anyway to, to turn around. And that's where I'm looking at putting the store. And that's what I've talked to them about is we're going to start small in the store. I don't want to go out and uh, get something really massive and spend ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on a building. And uh, no. then us decide, yeah, this ain't the route for us. We think we really think it is, but. Uh, I saw Mrs. Hidden Heights wanted to say hi to her. Oh, Wish we could there. hang out it's their turn in to person. <laughs> it's their turn to come to Arkansas, right? Um, also saw something. Did else. you see that one? Oh, here it was. What? Next year, try that. Okay, I'm going to butcher this name. <laughs> you do a lot of um, Gonquian. I'm going to just cover my mouth. Um, 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 squash. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I, I should have put those in this year and I failed. Well, 
you're probably glad you didn't put them in this year because pretty much all, all of our squash, squash failed. Yeah. Been our worst year. I for think squash. it was Patty. I can't find it. Right here. That said her favorite. Yes. Her best is the pink ox heart. That is my best too. It's just the really year good. for ox hearts. They are like, they're huge. They've neglected their garden lately, but looks like they're doing a little help with the uh, Dutch. Yeah. Y'all are being good friends and neighbors. I was seeing people commenting on. Oh, Garden Lady. It's her first time to ever watch one of our live streams. Wow, welcome. Awesome. I was seeing people on, um, I, get, I can't remember if it was y'all's video or Dutch's video saying, everybody needs a friend like that. Everybody, you got a brother in this state or that state. Yeah, it's nice to have friends that'll come help you. There's the Max. Hey, guys. Day girl. Aphids love my broccoli last year. Yeah. I'm trying again this fall, but I actually, the kids and I sprouted a ton of seeds, mainly the kids. They did that for me one day. And then we got worms on the plants in the greenhouse on the starts. I couldn't believe it. And you sit there and picked them off and fed them to the fish? Yeah. <laughs> We picked and picked and picked and picked them. So the tilapia got them a nice little tree. Hey, Max, are y'all uh, are y'all getting quite a bit of honey stored up uh, in your hives? Um, ours are, I don't know, pretty dirty. I actually put out uh, Sunday. Sunday got home from church, put out five gallons of sugar water for them. And within about two hours, that five gallons was gone. It's they, crazy. they drank five gallons in about, right at two hours. I put another 10 gallons out there and uh, I didn't go back and check. Everybody's saying they're squashed it bad. I literally got like two squash and I've planted probably 50 seeds or more. I have a lot of my garden in squash, but I didn't get squash. But it's not the. Uh, it's not the seed. No. It's the weather, the bugs. Mickey Martin said, are you familiar with our Wyoming Life Channel? They have a farm yes. store on the property, ranches and farmers. We love that channel. I actually um, really studied his building. It's not no bigger than this room, but they've got their little cooler in there. Uh, they've got their soaps and their yeah. lotion, their honey. Uh, I, I watched that one pretty close. I like their... Um, I just like how they work together. I was telling Ben, they were pulling what they thought was a dead calf on one of their videos. And so they were working on it. But, you know, when, when you think you've already lost a calf, you're not in as big of a hurry because you're just you're let down and you're disappointed and all that. But they started pulling it out. It was coming out backwards even, and it moved. And they figured out real quick that it was alive. And so it got super stressful they wind up getting it out. Long story short, it lived. And of course, me, that's like my life here on this farm. So I was like into it. And But they were so just you kind. Said he, was so calm. he was so calm and he was just so nice to his wife. And she was um, freaking? She was like, use your, can use your phone and record it. And she was just like, that's how I get. And he was like, honey, you're holding my phone and recording me. And I was like, that's, I need to channel some <laughs> of that patience because I freak out. I need it too. And so, but. I really like their channel. I'm sure y'all heard of them, but if you haven't, My Wyoming Life or Our Wyoming Life, I think is actually what it's called. Max lost one of theirs to wax moths. I lost one of mine to robbing. Oh, there's Rachel at that 1870s homestead. I seen I watched one of their videos the other day of uh, harvesting a bunch of potatoes and that dirt. Man, that looked amazing. Black as coal. She said she didn't get cucumbers. That's the thing that did like awesome here is yeah. cucumbers. We've last got year we didn't, yeah, last year you didn't get hardly any cucumbers. Uh -uh. And so we planted a lot and we got a lot. Albany Mountain Homestead is in north central Arkansas. I didn't realize that. We're neighbors. They had very little pest problems when growing Cherokee tan pumpkins. Our melons and things have done really mm -hmm. well. Squash. Wendy's is, squash is going crazy. See, we just need a community where this one can grow that. Now we're going crazy yeah. on cucumbers. 
actually got a friend at work that uh, we're swapping him some okra for some squash. Yeah. <clears throat> but believe you me, the squash has been planted and replanted and planted, and there's some out there right now just starting to come out of the ground, little shoots. Owning a store is almost like owning a milk cow. Even when you don't feel like it, you have to go. When you don't want to deal with people, it's tough. Yeah. But we're pretty we're pretty tied down already. Um, oh, man. Betty Jean said, I sure hope your weather, weather is better there than it is here. We were wiped out by a tornado and lost 200 milk wow. cows in our home in Wisconsin. Was that recently? That's terrible. Wow. 200 cows and your home. I just cannot even imagine. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you, Patty. She posted a link to Our Wyoming Life. I would say check them out if you like cows. And I just think it's interesting. Wyoming is totally different than here. Uh, we've actually been out there and it was, didn't you think it was interesting mm -hmm. driving through there? We would drive through there and just talk about like, what do these animals eat? It's we crazy. have, we have so much grass here that I'm just, we get sick of it because there's grass everywhere. But, um, had had any tomato hornworms? I think we had them like three times. And if you don't already know, black lights are amazing. You can yeah. find tomato hornworms that long at night. Promise you. If you've got tomato hornworms and you get a black light, you will find them. Yeah. Jess, um, should have patented that. I don't know if she made that up what? or if she saw that somewhere. The, the, the black, black light. light. But she know. is the one that put the video out. Um, that we saw. Yeah, and then Justin Rhodes actually mentioned her about the black light too. It's, it's pretty genius. What bulls are you running with the herd right now? We have actually got um, our new South Pole out with the main herd. And we've still got a, uh, a black baldy over with our other herd. Our and then we small have a herd. real spicy jersey in with the milk cows. He wants to fight me. And I think I'm going to win. I told you, take that hot shot right to his nose. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to fight. He's he's not right. nice. Teach him who's boss and that way he don't get up. He's young too, so it kind of makes me nervous like when he gets full grown, what's he going to do then? But there's none there. I bet you're still working hard, even though the conference is online. I guarantee you. That might even be, might even be more work. Betty Jean said it was yesterday. Well, I am mm. so very sorry about that. And um, we are definitely going to pray for you. And I wish we could give you a big hug. It sounds like you are okay. So I'm, I'm glad about that, but that's still, that's, that's tough. Hey, Peggy Sue. Welcome. I love that. Welcome name. to VW Family Farm. And all of our friends are in the chat. See you, Rachel. Miss Hidden Hot. She may already be gone, but. What you drinking, Andrea? This is actually um, tea chino. Um, if you follow Danny and Wanda, I don't know if they both quit coffee, but I know she did and she started drinking this. And so I ordered me some cause I've had to quit coffee completely and it is a very good substitute. It's made of like dandelion and um, some different things. It's the best replacement I have found and good. it's good for your digestion. It's better than that dandy, dandy blend. I like dandy blend too, but they're different. I like Navy Blend. I haven't tried this one. I've seen a lot of people talking about the BT. <laughs> Patty said that um, their rooster is getting worse. Max about to kill him if he keeps it up. <laughs> Roosters and bulls are close match for me. Like I'm scared of both of them. Maybe a little more scared of the bull. Just a little bit. 
Uh, you could, if you had to, you could punt that rooster. Yeah. That's what I've told her. <laughs> she jumps up on the hay bale. I did. But she put it. him in the frying pan, too. I did, but then he kept coming back. It was like a horror <laughs> movie. And, oh, yeah. Shrinkfield Ridge said, I love Dandy Blend. It's, it is good. Yeah, I like Put it. a little cream in it and mm -hmm. a little, like, Stevie, it almost, it tastes like a cappuccino. Jackie said, I could never give up my coffee. I thought the same thing. <laughs> but I have had some pretty miserable times over the last mm, nine months, eight months. Allison said, I want to quit procrastinating because of the headache. Yeah. It only lasted for me, and I've drank coffee for years and years, so I knew it was going to be bad, but it was really only bad for – well, the first morning that I quit, my body didn't know what was happening yet. But by lunchtime, it was like, whoa, girl, you're going to have to get some coffee. But by that afternoon, I had a bad headache. But I was I was OK after a, not days. even a day, maybe a, maybe a day or two. But it wasn't near as bad as I thought. Hey, there's the queen bee. Yep. There's Kaylee. So, anyway, it's called Tea Chino. This is actually dandelion mocha mint. It's actually pretty good. If you try it, um, I think Wanda has a link for it, maybe in the description of her Crazy Days' video. So, you might want to check that out. The French roast is actually the one that tastes the closest to coffee for me. Evan's family said dark pepper. Out of dandelions. Yeah. I've made my own substitute too out of just herbs I mix together and stuff. Wow. Todd said I look like I could be 20 years old. That is so very nice. Who said that? Todd and Rachel at 1870 something. <laughs> when I go places with the kids, I, a lot of times they will call me their sister and it just makes my day. I'm serious. And she comes home and tells everybody about yes. it. Yes. She's so pumped. It makes my whole day because I don't even sometimes on this farm have time to get barely dressed, much less fixed up. So good evening from Mississippi. Love watching you. And I think you have an awesome family. An awesome farm. God bless you. Keep up the good work. Trying to quit smoking. That mm. is tough. Yes. You can do it though. I believe in you and you can do it. And they say once you do it, that your health starts improving like immediately. So, um, but whatever you do, do not give in, even if it's 10 years later. Uh, I've got friends. I used to be a dipper. Actually, I, I've done it all, but I used to dip a lot. <laughs> We're just airing it all out. Yeah. Huh? And uh, what was it? Five years ago? Six years ago I quit? I don't even remember now. I didn't put a date on it. But, you didn't uh, even tell me. Hmm? You didn't even tell me. No. Because I wanted to do it on my own. But anyway, I've got friends that they ended up, they went back to it. Just one little dip, whatever. And no, they're hooked right back on it all the time. So make sure don't ever don't ever pick up that one. That, that's what will get you. Yeah. Hello from the Ozarks. What state are you in the Ozarks in? That's hilarious. Because my wife gets that. The principal lost her in the room and thought she left her class alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. We got asked where quadruplets. That's funny. When Emily hurt her leg back. I think it was like Memorial Day or something. I had to take her to urgent care. They started to talk to me about her. And then the guy was like, no, wait, you are her mom, right? And I was like, <laughs> yes, I am. But thank you. Because I'm such a hot mess. If that's just a little pleasure you can give me. Yes, they are awesome. Uh, that was one of my concerns was uh, when she started wanting to homeschool. Was they going to be, you know, weird, <laughs> nerdy? different well i mean they are but 
They are. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they're they're different than most of the society. There there are some really really hardworking kids. I can't brag on them enough. I know that. Uh, especially Lane handles all the man work while I'm out working uh, away from home. So really super super proud of them kids. Thank you, Kaylee. Oh, we Missouri keep looking. Missouri side of the Ozarks. Allison says we keep looking younger every day. My mom was born and grew up in the Arkansas Ozarks in Mountain Home. We've been up there. What? Quite a few times. That's the way we go to go to Baker Creek. I don't know about y'all, but last year was our first year to like do YouTube really seriously. Um, the year before that, we were kind of getting started and really sporadic. So last year, we got pretty serious about it. And we went to several conferences, especially the ones right around us. And so now this year, nothing. You say it's right like, around us. We went to everything. Yeah, we did. We went from one side of the country all the way to the other. Well, we went to um, Baker Creek. No, first, first we went to Deep South. Deep South. Yep. We went like seven hours down. And then... Um, what was after that? April. Ours. Ours. <laughs> and then May was Baker Creek. Yeah. And then. Um, we had a couple months off. Didn't we? I think we had a couple months off. And then September, we went to California. In October, we went to the HOA. So now here it is. It's going to soon be a year since we've been anywhere like that. Well, really anywhere. Pretty much. Because we've been very tied down. Um, our My parents were our farm sitters. And we was getting comments. That we weren't true homesteaders because yeah. we were going. People were like, stay home. We got some ugly, ugly comments about, you need to stay not home. Many, but we did. Not many, a couple. You need to stay home, work on your flower beds. They're looking trashy. I'm like, if I stay home, the flower beds ain't what's going to be <laughs> worked on. But anyway. There's a Evans Family Homestead, high from Arkansas. Oh, no. Are y'all from Arkansas? We are. Yes, we are. Oh, thank you, Jerry. Very, very much. That will go into the building fund. Yes. The shed fund. We're going to call it the shed. That's what we're, we've uh, all agreed on is we're going to take uh, what earnings we get, and we are putting all of them towards the new business. Sherry said, I'm on day two of no smoking, just been eating carrots, LOL. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, when I was in high school, I ate a ton of carrots. Miss you carrot. will have a good tan because you will turn orange if you eat a ton of them. So. South Carolina. Did y'all feel the, uh, Greg Page says hello from South Carolina. So did y'all feel the earthquake the other day? I heard there was a pretty good shake up North Carolina, South Carolina area. So I don't even know if I finished my thought. I get sidetracked real easy. But um, so my parents have always been our farm sitters. They live just a little ways down the road and they've been retired for years. And so they'd come out here every day and do our stuff, check everything, spend the day. And they've just had a rough last year and a half. And so it's just, it's just too much. So they didn't say that. They would never say that. They just keep struggling to do it. But um, when we came home from the HOA last year, my mom was down in her back and she's just that mom. Um, she won't tell you. I didn't even find out until I got home. And it, it happened like probably before we even left, but they didn't want us to not go. So for us to ever go anywhere again, we're going to have to find some hired help. Hired help. Like to for a week at a time. Okay, before I put these up, I'm, I think I've showed you all on a video. I'm kind of proud of my, my seed collection box and all the dividers in it. Is that about? Yeah, let's in don't there? it. That's just a box from the DG. And I cut up some cardboard and made dividers. Which, if you don't know what DG is, it's Dollar General, but. They're everywhere out in the country. That's like all the shopping we basically have. 
And they got different size boxes. This is for Emily's flowers. Okay, so are they're trying to talk the Max into having a picnic? Just a little bit OCD. What, you? Yeah. Yeah, just a lot. I'm OCD too, though. I can't, I got him in. I'm OCD about weird things. He's OCD about like organization and, Tiny, um, but in a weird way, like you can let chaos go like in the shop or something. But when yeah. you decide to do it, we're going to do it right. And me, I'm going to halfway do it like every day. <laughs> and then it's going to be like halfway done. But Arkansas has the most dollar stores I've ever seen. I saw a hilarious thing that said, um, <laughs> Somebody got the seeds from China and planted them, and look what sprung up, and it was a dollar tree. <laughs> uh, Fifty-two packet pickup. Is yours alphabetized? No, but they. I are, thought it was actually. No, they're they're like tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, melons, peppers. I am okay. Patty said I'm not OCD, or this this may be Mac. I'm just particular about certain things, doing things right the first time. He is a do it right the first time. I'm like for real typical just OCD. Like if something, I don't even know how to explain it. Can like, I show your list? No, 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 no. We can't go <laughs> Just there. to get it marked off. The list. But I'm the one that's like, did I turn that light off? I don't know. I need to go check. I think I did. No, maybe I didn't. That's me. Like OCD. Numbers. I count everything. Like. I'm classic OCD. I'm sorry. You have to live with me. <laughs> I love you anyway. Well, good. It's We're too far into this deal, so oh, yeah. you may as well. Patty said she has a seed box like that, too. Tom said we're excited to get out of the city and get out of this crazy stuff. Come on to the country. Love it out here. Quiet. Yeah, I couldn't go back. I grew up in town. And DGs are all over Kansas. There's no way I could live back in town. TC Game 65. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So if I don't get there, here's some help for you. Thanks for the videos and the dreams. That is so nice. Wow. Disabled and 55 want to start a farm. What what all are you thinking of doing on your farm? Because that, I think that's awesome. Thank you so very, very much. That is going towards the shed. I can promise you that. Store, shed, yeah, store, store, building. Store, store sounds better than shed. I got some pea seed, 50% off at the hardware store. That's Little Creek. How are y'all doing? We just planted seeds, pea seeds. And then FedEx delivered something. They just come <laughs> up. They were like that tall, like a couple inches tall. I was like, ah, every one of them came up. FedEx made a delivery and ran off in my garden. And wouldn't you know it, they hit the row of peas. It's like they was trying to get on sale. Oh, okay, we're going to get back on. They they plowed down a good little section of them. But I told you I, you should call him out. No, nah, I can't. I can't call someone their job over some peas. And if I called and complained, I'd be afraid they'd get fired. And then I'd feel terrible. And I just replanted them. It was okay. I need a person to trust. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, when you leave in thousands and thousands of dollars worth of animals for somebody else to, oops, sorry, to sit there and take care of while you're gone, yeah, it's uh, or pretty, to help you, yeah, uh, or just help you do stuff. It's hard to find good help these days, mm -hmm. like people that, um, that's part of why. We have just poured every moment into our kids because we feel like there's no better helpers that we can find because all of this is theirs too. 
Um, and so we just felt like there would be no better, nobody else that would help us with the work ethic that they would. Silver Summit said, time to lock my ducks up in case you're not here when I get back. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. And that's where we got our ducks, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all stay tuned. Um, let's see. I think it's coming out Thursday. We're going to show you what we got from, from Silver, Silver Summit. Summit. And he is getting geared up to, um, you you say, so I don't say something he's, wrong. He's trying <laughs> to start up his own business of a very rare and hard to find breed of ducks. And it'll all be in that video coming up. Yeah. Yes, they're really awesome. They've all made it. Yep. They're doing great. They actually got a little freedom today. Allison so, said she'll leave your cow counter. Okay, good. That's <laughs> and, another and thing. Maker. Yeah. Check, check. That's another thing I'm OCD about is counting cows. Right. We're going to count, and we're going to count, and we're going to count until we get the right number. Even if it's 25 wrong numbers and one right number. If we get it right one time, I'm okay with yeah, stopping. Yeah, do you process your own chickens? We do. This woman um, right here, her and Emily, they've done it all by themselves while me and Lane was doing hay. It they, was a lot more work with just me and her. But. And there was, what, 13 of them on that batch, and they were huge. Most people I get to help around my place want $50 for 30 minutes of work. Mm. Woo! That's high. Yeah. Hundred dollars an hour. And we're way underpaying the kids then. Don't tell them. <laughs> so we processed them, and then today, a lot of times I just freeze ours whole. But um, today I actually cut up because there was only thirteen of them, so I cut all thirteen of them up into pieces. So we're gonna freeze them like in girl power for sure, huh? Like they come back there to the egg field. Pieces. After they was through, and they'd done cleaned up, but they still had <laughs> some blood splatter everywhere from all the little chick or from the chickens, uh, the little blood splatter all over. And I asked them, I said, y'all get a little dirty? They said, oh, we've already cleaned up. And I had on a ridiculous looking headband, and Emily said, you look like you killed someone and stole their headband. <laughs> <laughs> they were so enormous. I didn't weigh any, but I you cut didn't. some up and fried them tonight. And I just did the breast and each one, each half breast, I guess you'd say, I cut into four big strips. Big strips. Big. They were crazy huge. They were like small turkeys. Hey, speaking of turkeys, did you get a call yet? Mm -mm. We're hmm. supposed to be getting turkeys this week. We're really, really excited about that. They're coming from Murray McMurray. Um, turkeys take longer, you know, they take like four or six months to grow out. So, but we are hoping to have some turkeys to put in the freezer. So someone asked about processing our chickens. So next year we are going to try, we may possibly this winter, possibly sure. build what's called a schooner. Yes. Which is a huge, it's like a monster chicken tractor. So we can put like a thousand chickens in it at once, but we can raise them out on pasture. It's not like a chicken house. It's a chicken tractor. It's open and everything and they can graze. And then, um, so we're thinking possibly next year doing four batches of a thousand. So 4,000 chickens. Isn't that crazy? But We've only ever done like 200 at a time. That's our max we've ever done. But we won't be cleaning them. We have a processing place only about 30 minutes away that they do chickens. So that will be awesome. Little Creek says they love raising the turkeys. They're hard, hard, hard to find this year. I have looked all over and I know we've waited a little long. For what? For turkeys. Yeah. We actually were looking. We wanted to get more than we've only. We that's got what like, Matt's asking is when do you order and receive your turkeys? Actually, these that we're getting, we ordered them. This is a good time to get them. 
Um, but it's, you probably, well, no, we've just cool. never had any trouble ordering before, like this year. Yeah. Everything's went crazy. COVID has changed. If changed, I know you wanted turkeys, I have a male and a female bourbon reds I could have brought. Oh, a Silver Summit. Oh, man. Yeah, we are, um, we just never had trouble. Pretty much, we would order them and get them, like, this time of year to raise for Thanksgiving. If you're raising the big white ones, um, what are those called? I can't remember. Broad-breasted mm -hmm. white. Mm -hmm. um, they grow bigger and faster, but um, we're getting more heritage ones this time. Skinner Farms, I can raise 70 to 80 chickens in my tractor. How big is it going to be, the Skinner? Uh, those They're were big. Was it 100, 100 foot long? 12 foot wide, something like that. Maybe. We, we've never even seen them anymore. Uh, seen them before. Sorry, I get to reading and I just say whatever I read. We'd never seen them before, but this thing popped up in Arkansas a few years ago through the Heifer International, um, which is a place that does a lot of relief work. And it was called Grassroots Co-op. And everybody started raising meat for this cooperative instead of all these little farms doing their own thing and trying to survive. They like all pulled together. And one was raising chickens. One was raising beef. One was raising pigs, all that. And they started putting in these, they call them schooners. So you can probably look up schooner, sure. um, but they're just a big metal frame. And then don't they have a big tarp that goes over them? Uh, a lot of the ones that I, uh, the one that Mitch had, was a metal roof. It's just like a metal carport on skids, but a lot longer. Like double the length. Double or triple the length, depending on. Uh, but there, I think his was about 100 foot long. And I think he had the tarps on the sides that he could pick up and had chicken wire behind that. That way, during the summer, you can pick the tarps up like on a chicken house and it breathe in there and not get too hot. Uh, so but they're pretty just, huge. You pull them around with a tractor. Yeah. Uh, and they, like I said, on skids and they just slide around. So you got to have them in a decent sized pasture because you're going to just keep moving. They're not easy to like turn and slide sideways and can't manhandle them like we do our little ones. Well, it is 802. So we are going to jump off here because there's other people going live. Um, Country Homestead Preacher, I'm pretty sure goes live after this. He can let you know. Um, also, I saw that Southern Blessed Homestead, I'm pretty sure she said they were going live right after this. Uh, if you were a moderator, say something, and we appreciate y'all. We've had several on here. I know we had the Honeystead, the Tinker's Wife. Um, we have had the Max. Yep. We've had several on here. Y'all go check them out. They all have some great channels, and we appreciate them very, very much. Pinky. Um, appreciate her. She has been a viewer of our channel from way back. And really, really appreciate you blessed our family with the super chat. Yes. Thank you so much. You have no idea. No idea. We are putting every penny towards trying to get this shed in this freezer. So anyway, thank y'all. And we will see y'all on the YouTube tomorrow. Thanks for watching. God bless. And now we get to see if we can end stream.